Welcome into a Q30 Sports Special. We're talking a little bit of women's basketball today and previewing Quinnipiac women's basketball's upcoming game against Michigan State. It's the first time in Quinnipiac basketball history, men's or women's that is, that a team from the Big Ten Conference comes to the TD Bank Sports Center. The Spartans of Michigan State University will be in Hamden on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock to face Trisha Fabry squad and to break the game down and everything about the opponent from East Lansing, Michigan. I'm now joined along, uh, you know, on the phone with Casey Harrison, uh, who's a sports editor at the State News, uh, which is Michigan State University's independent voice. Casey, thanks for hopping on and giving me a few minutes of your time. How are you? Oh, I'm very good. Thanks for having me along. I'm glad to, you know, be a part of this. Anytime, Casey. And before we get to the women's team, you know, we were talking off the air a couple minutes ago. You had a great opportunity to cover the men's team down at Cameron Indoor Stadium. So what was that like covering the men's team and, you know, that Duke team that seems to be filthy year in and year out? You know, my friend kind of told me a little bit about Cameron Indoor Stadium before I went there. And he told me that, like, yeah, the student section, they're right up against you. And I was like, I didn't really give it that much thought. And then once, once I actually got situated to cover the game, um, it, it almost was like a, just a mob of people just rushing in and they were so ecstatic to get a front row seat and they were literally right on top of you. I mean, I, I, I couldn't even stand up to um, do anything, really. Everybody was just so smushed up against you and I, it was such an electric atmosphere. I mean, I wouldn't even want to write basketball or cover basketball for Duke if, if I went there or if that's what I was paid to do. I mean, it's, it's such an intimidating atmosphere there that um, it really is tough to go out there and get a win. That's why they call them the Cameron Crazies. You know, that was a great game. Miles Bridge is just a tremendous player. You know, a little bit of a slow start. I was reading a couple articles, one of the columns uh, in the state news, just telling fans and, and students, you know, calm your horses a little bit. Tom Izzo scheduled a tough out of conference schedule, but I think the Spartans will be back. You know, come January or February, that record will be just fine. Oh, yeah, that's always kind of been a zambo is to toughen up the guys during non conference and even a little bit during uh, Big Ten season. And I, I mean, you can see in years past that he takes a team that isn't really expected to do much. And he's been one of the best in terms of getting uh, the MSU into the Final Four so many times throughout his career here. Um, yeah, and it really is a shame because Miles Bridges actually went down with an ankle injury after the game against Duke. Um, he's going to be out for roughly two or three weeks, uh, maybe even a little bit more. But you can see that that team really needs him. I mean, he was kind of a crutch for them uh, the entire year, and they played their first game without him against Oral Roberts on Saturday. And, I mean, that was a really close game. Uh, MSU only came away winning that one by four. So now, you know, like Tom Izzo, Trisha Fabry, the head coach of the Quinnipiac women's basketball team, likes to challenge her team as well, you know, much like Izzo does with his team. And Quinnipiac has played the likes of Dayton and Florida Gulf Coast, who are mid-major powers, and they've taken care of both, you know, the Eagles and the Flyers. And then they went down to Temple University, who's, you know, right in between that mid-major and Power 5 school. Uh, Quinnipiac, who split with Temple last year, lost a heartbreaker at Temple, a game in which, you know, they, they were leading for over 33 minutes. But now it faces a big dog. It faces a Michigan State Spartans team that you know like the back of your hand. Michigan State, you know, 7-2 and two right now. Uh, its two losses were to Oregon and to Syracuse. Um, it's coming off a win, though, against Oakland, 81-74. So before we talk about this season, Casey, what was the team's expectations coming into 2016-17? Going into the season, um, really, head coach Susie Merchant, she wanted to emphasize that getting back to the Big Ten Championship. Um, the team went there last year, and it was really a great season. Um, they had girls like uh, Ariel Powers, who had just an absolutely dominating season um, on both sides of the ball. She was one of the best in the Big Ten, and she was an All-American. Um, she left, though, this year to pursue a career in the WNBA. Um, and so that really kind of left the reins for uh, Tori Jankowska. Uh, she's really done a good job at leading the team um, and taking the reins over from Powers. And kind of the MO for this MSU team this year is that if you're going to compete against them, then you have to kind of punch them in the mouth early. And if you do that, then you'll do a very good job at making sure that it is a relatively close game. Um, even against Oakland University, I mean, MSU uh, lost the lead a couple times 
nearing halftime and even a couple times in the third quarter, uh, Oakland really kind of got out there and it, it made it nerve wracking from a fan standpoint because it's being upset is something that, you know, um, has never really been a, a big part of MSU women's basketball. So now they're coming to Quinnipiac. They want to try to avoid this upset. Using what you've seen in the first nine games, what does Michigan State need to do you know, to make sure that they do get the win out here on the East Coast? Uh, like I said, they've got to come out of the gate strong. Um, they've got to make sure that they limit the turnovers. And they've been a pretty good job. Um, they're a very good team at rebounding. Um, they out-rebounded Oakland, who is actually one of the top five rebounding teams in the country. Um, and as long as Tori Jankowski can really, you know, get in a rhythm and help the team itself get into, you know, a, a relatively fast pace of play. Uh, Jankowski is shooting almost 48% uh, from the floor this year and over 41% from three-point range. And she, she really is a workhorse. I mean, she has been um, averaging almost 36 minutes a game. She played nearly 40 minutes against Oakland on Friday. And... Uh, the, the key to success for Quinnipiac is going to be able to keep Jankowska in check. If you guys are unfamiliar out there in the Midwest, you guys are going to quickly be familiar with it out here on the East Coast. Quinnipiac plays a style, and they, they've, fr- they've phrased it the gold rush, which means they play, it's almost like hockey. Uh, in terms of the lines and the substitutions, that is, Casey Quinnipiac will you know, obviously have a starting five, and then off the bench, it'll throw another five in. They like to play five in and five out. You know, they recruit to that style. They have a ton of depth. They have a ton of length, a ton of athleticism. So I'm sure that will be the game plan, always running fresh legs out at Jankoska. But for those Quinnipiac fans joining us today, uh, you know, Jankoska, fifth in the country in points. She was three assists shy uh, you know, of a triple-double in that win against Oakland, you know, her, what have you seen the most out of her this year in 2016, 2017, you know, and what's that, what was that step taken up? You know, how has she elevated her game with the absence of powers? Uh, just a sheer, um, terms of development and maturation. Uh, when, when Ariel powers left, it was kind of a surprise, um, because a lot of people thought that she was going to come back for her senior season. And for Tori Jankowska to, you know, take the reins of this team, and she's done an exceptional, exceptional job of it, um, especially with girls like Brandy Agee kind of taking um, a different role in, in terms of uh, the play style. You know, Brandy Agee, um, she was a really big three-point shooter for the team last year. She's taking a more defensive role this year. And, I mean... Jankowska has been so instrumental on offense. She's been taking um, young leaders such as uh, you got the young girl in Taryn McCutcheon. Um, she, she's just brand new this year. And then you also have uh, Jenna Allen, who's a sophomore now. And she's been a really big part in how the offense moves and how, how quickly that they've been able to get on top of things. So obviously Jankoska at, at you know just under 24 points a game, but you look at you know the statistics for this Michigan State women's basketball team, Casey, and there's not another player outside of Tory that averages over 10 points. So what can you tell us about you know the Michigan State supporting cast? You know what what should we focus in on before Tuesday night? Uh, Jenna Jenna Allen is really going to play their big role. Um, she's averaging just over nine points a game, um, but what she provides is a lot of uh, versatility because she can play forward, she can play center, and she even shoots the ball pretty well in the paint. Um, and then another girl to kind of relieve her is a graduate transfer from Notre Dame, T- uh, Taya Reimer. And she's been able to also be a very good um, starter, really, for Michigan State. She's at 9.7 points a game, and uh, she's also averaging 26 minutes a game. She was a little fatigued against... Um, Oakland on Friday, and that's kind of been a thing to worry about because uh, just like the Michigan State men's team, uh, they've traveled out to Oregon, they've traveled out to New York. That's a lot of miles and not a lot of time, and it's really kind of limited the amount of time that uh, the team has been able to practice. And uh, Susie kind of mentioned it a little bit after her game uh, on Friday at the press conference that she's really kind of this is a brand new part of the team that she's really never explored. It's it's almost like uncharted territory um, in terms of she's never really had a team that has had such a lengthy traveling schedule like this. 
Um, other girls, uh, you get Lexi Gussert and Hannah Vesela. They're going to be important off the bench, especially like you said, um, how Quinnipiac is really so kind of different in terms of getting so many girls out there and they, they run in shifts. Um, so, yeah, I, really, it, it's going to come down to having the ability to not stay fatigued or to not be fatigued at all and staying fresh, um, especially on the bench. Quinnipiac's done done very well with with you know the big time stars in its own conference, the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. You know players like Tori Jarose, who once was a Power Five player at Maryland. She played for um, Maris, Joy Adams, Demika Martinez, pl- who played for Iona. But I think you know Tori Jankoska and the rest of her team will, will definitely provide you know even more um, of an opportunity for success, you know, for an opportunity for Quinnipiac to really measure themselves up against one of the best teams, you know, in the country year in and year out. One thing we talked about off the air was uh, before the game uh, against, or at the beginning of the game against Oakland, Michigan State had a slow start. So you said, you know, Quinnipiac really has to get the shot first at Michigan State. But from your end, what does Michigan State need to correct to make sure that it has a, a strong start? Being able to drive the lane, really, that's a big part of it. Um, they're, they're kind of a, a team that, I don't want to call them not aggressive, but they, they like to test their shots early on in the game to try and develop a rhythm that way. Uh, I, and that's kind of been, you know, a thing that keeps the other team in the game for the most part. Um, so being able to establish a presence in the paint and, you know, driving the lane and getting shots from within the three-point marker, that's going to be a big thing. Um, another thing is transition defense. Um, mm-hmm. Oakland had a lot of points uh, off of the second chance and being able to you know, get, get a run going on the fast break. Um, transition defense has been an aspect that Susie's been trying to work with the team to kind of develop and get better at the entire season. All right, well, now we know a little bit more about Michigan State. Quinnipiac, you know, has five players, has ten players. You know, who's ever out on the court, it doesn't matter, one through five. It seems like all of the players can shoot the three. All of the players can run the court. So if you're Trisha Fabry, if you're Quinnipiac, it looks like, you know, according to you, Casey, Quinnipiac's really got to push the tempo. Anything else you want to add before we let you go? Yeah, I mean, anything's possible. I mean, you've heard of Middle Tennessee State. <laughs> um and the key for Michigan State is really just going to be establishing a rhythm and dominating the tempo of the game. Um, you saw that at times they weren't 100% in the driver's seat against Oakland, and it almost came back to fight them. Um, George Jankowska, luckily, is a one-man band, and I mean, she can really do it all. She got help from Jenna Allen, and Taryn McCutcheon, She's going to be a really instrumental part. She started all nine games so far for the Spartans this year. Um, and she got into foul trouble. And that's kind of been a point of emphasis all year long. She's actually the leading. Uh, she leads the team in fouls uh, right now with 24. And so that's, that's going to be a big part to keep her on the court and really have the bench get into the whole mix of things. They can't just be Tory because going into this game, you know that you going to have to guard her, so you're going to have to, you know, mix in the offense a little bit. Casey Harrison, the sports editor at the State News, which is Michigan State's Michigan State University's independent voice. You can follow him on Twitter. You know, give him a follow at C Harrison TSN. Casey, thanks for hopping on, telling us a little bit about Sparty basketball. Thanks, Murray. Uh, anytime, uh, anytime you need me, just give me a call back, and I'd love to be back on the show. No problem, no problem. Once again, Michigan State Spartans, 7-2, and two, enter Hamden, Connecticut to face the Quinnipiac Bobcats, 6-1. and one. They will face off on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. For more information about Quinnipiac women's basketball or any Quinnipiac you know, University athletic teams, check us out on our website at q30television.com and on Twitter at Q30Sports. For Casey Harrison, I'm Maury Hirsch-Gordon. We'll see you next time.